All right, today the topic and content of our lecture is SD1, hands-on lab. We expect to explain the principles of SD1 through a series of experiments and how to apply it in our campus network, within organizational structures like headquarters and branch offices, to how to deploy and optimize as well as troubleshooting our SD WAN 1. The main content, we divide it into two major parts to facilitate everyone's learning and grasp of their own experimental progress. The first part is also divided into four smaller segments to break it down for everyone. All right, let's take a look at what's included in the first segment. The first part is an introduction to our entire experimental scenario throughout the learning process. We have two main learning materials. One is the PPT we all see, and the other is a step-by-step -step experimental manual, which introduces our experimental scenario in great detail. To put it simply, our experimental scenario involves dual DC deployment and application in a headquarters and branch office setup. DC headquarters and branch office deployment and application. All right. After understanding our experimental architecture, the first thing to do is initialization of our controller. Our controller integrates through certificates and communication over the underlay. We can integrate them together. This is our first hands-on experimental session. The second part is about the controller's HA high availability. What does it mean? To ensure network high availability, RV Manage role needs to form a cluster in our entire headquarters and branch office environment. We need to deploy multiple VBond and VSmart devices to achieve controller. HA VBond and VSmart. Deploy multiple units to serve the controller's HA function. The fourth part is the initialization of C Edge. It is particularly noted that in our new version, our C Edge uses the C8K model to deploy C Edge, or in other words, in our actual environments, Cisco's recommended C Edge is also the C8K. Well, after we have completed the entire environment initialization, we need to proceed with bringing our C Edge online, which we call onboarding. There are two ways to bring our C-Edge online, one of which is known as PMP or ZTP. These two methods, ZTP, with the help of Cisco's backend cloud servers, inform our C-Edge and our VBond of their locations, thus enabling our junior engineers to complete the onboarding tasks. PMP, especially for some of our hardware devices, allows us to quickly onboard by simply using, for example, a USB drive or email. This is about the device onboarding. During the device onboarding process, there is also something called a serial file, which we can consider as our C edges whitelist. On the internet, it's a very important security aspect that only our legitimate C edges can integrate with our controllers. This is achieved through a whitelist, which is our serial file, okay? After our C edge is online, the next thing we need to do is our controller and our C edge have already been authenticated by the controller through certificates and we have completed the underlay environment. Actually, once we have completed the underlay environment, we naturally enter the overlay environment because we have already implemented the overlay with the OMP protocol, forming a full mesh called a fabric network. Up to this point, our basic SD1 environment has already been set up. Then the next very important task involves two critical missions. We will manipulate our topology through templates and strategies. This is the most important first task. We manipulate our topology through templates, or as it is said, strategies. We will process our topology into a hub-spoke communication model. We can also run the protocols we need between our headquarters and branches, typical EIGRP and OSPF protocols. Note that these protocols run in our overlay environment. They operate in a VPN isolated manner, which is significantly different from the traditional EIGRP and OSPF. In the first part, we arranged a series of so-called security features. 
The first security feature is zone-based firewall. We have integrated the traditional zone-based firewall into our C-Edge, hoping to implement it in our SD1 switch. Besides the firewall, we also have application-based firewalls. A new feature is service insertion. Service insertion is essentially traffic steering. In our corporate environment, our hub and headquarters have more or very strong firewalls. For security purposes, our branches will direct traffic to our firewalls to cleanse the traffic through the firewall, ensuring our communication is secure. Our C-Edge also integrates IPS and URL filtering features. In our corporate scenario, we don't want our employees to shop, chat, or play games during work hours. Thus, we can block access to such websites using URL filtering. Then, Cisco's backend Talos team has categorized our global websites. We can use these categories for URL filtering. This is the general content of the first part. The second part, similarly, through policies or templates, we manipulate our entire traffic. The first is dual DC. Our dual DC can achieve traffic optimization. We prefer the primary DC. At the same time, we can also create backups for DCs. Data policy represents a method for our data plane. Through optimization, we direct specific traffic to access specific DCs, thereby distributing the traffic load. Application Aware Routing ASR is an important feature of SD1. As we know, SD1 is not just about pushing all configurations, but when our applications run within the SD1 VPN, our controller will monitor our line's real-time load, jitter, and packet loss to dynamically schedule different applications' bandwidth requirements. We can dynamically direct our traffic to a suitable link. This is AAR. This is standard DIA. To isolate visitor traffic, we use NAT on the guest VPN. Central control. For centrally seed traffic control, in headquarters and branch scenarios, we expect, for security, all traffic to access the internet through the data center. This can be scheduled by policy in SD1. Next, let's look at costs scheduling. Next, we'll take a look at costs. Our QoS, compared to before, has added three new different QoS types. Each tunnel can implement QoS, and each VPN service can also implement QoS. Considering the bandwidth situation for our headquarters and branches, we can implement dynamic QoS. T, LOC extension, is a new feature of SD1. It's different from traditional routing entries. Its main function is to extend all our lines, making full use of deep packet inspection, or DPI. This was the previous approach to alleviate the communication pressure on our edge routers. We often performed first packet inspection. Detection of the first data packet so subsequent traffic is no longer inspected. Cisco SD-WAN actually can perform deep packet inspection to monitor our data sequencing and ensure our data adheres to our data plane policies. For ECMP load balancing, we can use different methods to achieve load balancing across our multiple links. BFD tuning is a built-in feature. We can adjust the BFD parameters based on our packet link jitter and loss to timely adjust our BFD detection parameters to quickly reflect changes in network quality, FEC and packet duplication in our real-time communications, such as our voice and video traffic. To protect our voice and video traffic, we can employ FEC and packet duplication to protect our traffic. Regarding root leak in our SD-WAN architecture, beyond our normal business operations, there are some special services such as our email, our FTP, our web, are some public services or public communications. In these cases, we need different VPNs to be able to access these public services. At this time, we need to use root leak to announce these public service routes into our VPNs, since our VPNs have isolated public routes. 
we need to handle this in a special way. Our controller, besides implementing policies and managing our configuration through templates, also needs to monitor our entire data domain. Our current monitoring method is through CE flow. CE flow is also a flow method we need to master. OK, to complete the two parts we just mentioned, the knowledge points, our routing and our topology architecture is designed like this. This is a simple topology of ours. Let's expand it a bit. As we mentioned earlier, dual DC. This is our DC1. This is our DC2. This is the headquarters. Our spokes, spoke one, spoke two. This is one of our methods. The entire structure of our headquarters and branches is now established. The access we just mentioned to our DC is very visually represented. Easy simulation of the traffic we need. This is our controller, but our controller to simulate what we just mentioned, the latency, jitter, and packet loss on the link. Okay, we borrowed an open source simulator called 1M. We use 1M to simulate the entire internet line. Internet line traffic, jitter, latency, packet loss, including their bandwidth can all be implemented through 1M to achieve this. Okay, this is what we discussed earlier in the initial communication and discussion with everyone about our knowledge points and topology. Next, as we just mentioned, we have two materials for learning. The first is our PPT, and another very important one is our lab manual. Next, let's take a look at the lab manual's table of contents. This is our lab manual. Let's briefly introduce our lab manual. The scenarios in which our SD-WAN can operate, we can see through our update history. Initially, we built in a VMware environment, our test environment. At that time, we called it Viptela. It should be the VEG environment. Let's abbreviate here. At that time, we built in a VMware environment, VEG's Viptela's router. This was the original lab manual we formed, then later we implemented in a CML environment. Our VEG also became C-Edge. Initially, C-Edge was implemented through CSR1000V. This is CSR1000V. Regarding CSR1000V, our controller's version also evolved from the initial 18.6 to version 19 and then to 20. By the time it reached version 20, we were still using CSR1KV. Please pay attention. At this point, Cisco's traditional routers, the ISRs, were fully integrated with our CML platform and interactive. Subsequently, we also tried in an open source version in a platform where it is also possible to implement our SD1 environment on the Eve Eng platform. We used QKW2 files, and Cisco officially provides QKW2 files as well. We can import QKW2 files into Eve NG to implement our SD1 environment. With the version updates, our controller, our C Edge, could also be deployed on the AWS platform as well as on Microsoft's cloud, including the third party Alibaba cloud platform. This is what we did on the Eve NG platform. In this course, we upgraded it to version 21 and then to 11. We returned to the VMIL platform, back to this platform, where we chose Cisco's recommended version 20.9.4. This version, correspondingly, is also C8KV, which we use to implement the entire environment we just mentioned. In the whole environment, we break it down into a total of 16 experiments. In the process of our explanation or implementation, we may add a series of experiments. These 16 experiments were initially implemented in one version. So, I believe in this course, we will also add to our experiment content. Okay, all right. That's all for today's SD1 course content and the introduction to our laboratory manual. We will end here.